and welcome to NFER Classroom's Research Bite series for schools. This series aims to summarise key findings from NFER's independent research and to provide evidence-based practical recommendations for schools to consider as you address key education topics. This month, June 2023, marks three years since reception, year one and year six pupils began to return to school and the partial return of face-to-face -face learning for years 10 and 12 pupils after the initial period of lockdown and partial school closures due to the COVID-19 pandemic. During this time, NFER has undertaken research on the impact of the pandemic on children and young people's social and emotional skills and well-being, as well as the impact on pupils' attainment. We know how hard schools have worked to minimise the impact of the pandemic on pupils and to support COVID recovery. Three years on, we thought it would be useful to discuss what the available evidence tells us about that recovery, both in terms of attainment and well-being. We also wanted to share practical evidence-based suggestions on where schools may want to focus your resources to continue that progress. To do that, we've produced two videos. In this video, we'll be discussing what research tells us about the impact of COVID on the attainment of children in primary school. We've also produced a second video where we discuss the available insights on the impact of COVID on the well-being and mental health of children and young people in all school phases. We'll link to that in the notes here and you can also find it on the NFER website. To talk us through the insights and recommendations, I'm very pleased to be joined today by NFER researcher Georgia Sawyer. Georgia is a former primary school teacher who is teaching during the pandemic and has first-hand experience of the realities of classroom life during this time. As a parent of two children who were both in Key Stage 1 at the start of the pandemic, this is also a really interesting discussion for me personally, as I'm sure it would be for many other parents. So let's start with what the research tells us about those youngest school age children, children who are now in years three and four, who are midway through reception and year one at the start of the pandemic. Georgia, what can you tell us? Yes, yeah, so we're undertaking a longitudinal study funded by the Education Endowment Foundation, which looks specifically at the impact of the COVID disruption on this group of children. Evidence gatherings now in the third year of this study, so we're now in a position where we can look back at what we learned from the second year of the study when these children were in years two and three. The study aims to understand the impact of partial school closures and COVID disruption on both attainment in terms of reading and maths and social skills. Evidence gathered in spring 2022, so in the second year of the study, suggested that many children who were in years two and three had caught up in terms of reading and maths attainment. So that's really positive news. However, it is worth noting that we did find a large increase in the proportion of the very low attainers in reading and to a lesser extent in maths than compared with before the pandemic. During the first year of the study in 2021, data suggested that the disadvantage gap had widened. In the second year of the study, there was no sign that the attainment gap between disadvantaged pupils and their peers had widened further, but neither had it reduced. So it therefore remains an important area for schools to focus on. OK, and is it a similar picture for children who were in key stage two, two during the partial school closures? So for this age group, evidence comes from standardised test suites. And these suggest that there were signs of recovery as early as summer 2021 for key stage two children, particularly for reading. For example, the Renaissance learning assessment data indicated that the COVID gap for both reading and maths was largest in spring 2021, but had reduced by summer 2021. In terms of continued progress in maths into 2022, Standardised test data from Renaissance Learning and Rising Stars collected in summer 2022 indicates that on average, primary children do remain behind their pre-pandemic counterparts. However, encouragingly, this gap appears to be closing. And the story for reading recovery is even more positive than for maths for key stage two children, suggesting outcomes in reading have largely recovered for many children. These findings are reflected in the national curriculum test data from 2022, where the percentage of year six children reaching expected standards declined between 2019 and 2022 for maths and writing, but
but increased very slightly in reading. In terms of the disadvantaged pupils in Key Stage 2, the National Curriculum Test data from 2022 also indicated that the disadvantage gap had widened compared to three years earlier. Again, this aligns with the standardised test data, which reports substantial disadvantage gaps in both reading and maths across year groups. Okay, so the evidence shows that schools and teachers have already done an incredible job to close the gap in learning brought about by COVID disruption. What did it suggest that primary schools could consider as a resource focus now to help close those final gaps where they are? Yes, yeah, so the research suggests um, that catch up support should focus on very low attaining pupils, as well as closing the disadvantage gap. Anecdotal evidence from school interviews from the schools that took part in our research suggested that taking a diagnostic approach and providing short regular interventions for target children was effective in addressing learning gaps, as well as taking an increased focus on behaviour for learning. And this links in with the wellbeing discussion in our other video. Teachers reported that the additional support had contributed to an increase in their workload. And so at this point, it's important to again recognise that it's essential that schools are given adequate funding and support to ensure that the required long term support can be de delivered to children. In terms of subject specific support um, that the evidence recommends, Evidence suggests that schools may want to consider a focus on the development of reading in those children who are currently in year three. So those children who would have been in reception at the start of the pandemic. Specifically, it indicates three areas where attainment was found to be lower than pre-pandemic. These are identifying and explaining key aspects of texts, identifying and explaining the sequence of events in texts and making inferences. In terms of the older primary school children, so those children now um, in years five and six, evidence suggests that focusing on areas in the key stage two maths curriculum with which they're struggling um, is effective in supporting these children. And the Department for Education's Ready to Progress guidance, as well as NCETM supporting resources, continue to be relevant to support schools with this. OK, so we've discussed what we've learned so far from research evidence. Um, is there more planned in this area? Yes, yeah, so as we mentioned earlier, the longitudinal study for those children who are currently in years three and four is continuing um, and the results of that will be published in the coming months. We also continue to evaluate the impact of the national tutoring programme, which applies to both primary and secondary age groups which was initiated during COVID to support learning recovery. So thank you, Georgia. Again, it's been a really interesting discussion. Um, what struck me is what an incredible job schools have done to support COVID recovery. And the evidence shows how effective they've been in what is a relatively short period of time. We also should say that we recognise schools will be experiencing much of what we've discussed day to day. And much of this, again, will feel familiar to them. So we hope this video was useful in not only setting out evidence that supports those experiences, but as a resource which, once again, as with the wellbeing video, you can share with members of the wider school community, such as parents and governors who may be interested and have their own questions about impact and recovery from COVID. Uh, once again, you'll find links to the various resources that we've mentioned on the NFER website via the link below, which you can also find in the video notes. This video is part of our Research Bite series for schools, which has been designed to summarise key findings from NFER's independent research and to provide practical evidence based recommendations for teachers and school leaders. If you have any feedback or suggestions for us on topics you'd like us to cover in the future, please just email classroom at nfer.ac.uk. Thank you for your time today and we hope to see you again soon.